here at the Batchwood Hotel. Earlier on when we were chatting to you, uh, we just took you through some of the stands uh, in the natural sciences there. We were in the farms uh, looking at solutions, of course, that can uh, solve problems in agriculture and uh, with the animals as well. Well, now we've moved on to another world of science, uh, physics, astronomy and uh, space science. Uh, plant science including marine plants and plant ecology and I'm just about to have a conversation with some social scientists here uh, talking social and psychological sciences uh, joining me for that uh, uh, conversation this morning are two students uh, who are participants uh, uh, here this uh, morning we've got uh, Ashuma uh, Ngwalangwala and she comes all the way from uh, Port Elizabeth from Alexander Road High School and we're also going to be chatting to uh, Carolyn uh, Boshoff as well who's from Saka Isizwe in Gemfundo Build the nation through early education. This is from the Cape Receive School uh, out in Port Elizabeth. Hello, ladies. Hello. How are you guys doing? Good, and you? You're good. All right. So, Ashima, I'm going to start uh, w with you. Uh, so, you're working on a project that uses electrolysis and galvanic cells to test how two salts behave under pressure. Two big things there. What exactly are you doing? Well, I took two salts and I wanted to see how they behave under electrified water. Mm -hmm. The basis of this project is a grade 12 uh, practical experiment that my friend was struggling with. And I thought it's developed through redox reactions. And I thought, okay, I was told that students in university struggle with understanding redox reactions because they battle with it in university. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe I would just recreate the project and it be used as a teaching medium, mm -hmm. as an example, because it's easy to grasp even for a grade 10 student. Grade, yeah. So now obviously your um, project is that you want to find solutions to ocean pollution and explore new resources for drinking water. We have a water crisis already. So you think you're going to have answers for us? Well, yes, based on my last year's project where I looked at uh, different uh, towns in my city and what is in the water. And mm -hmm. I thought, okay, I'll just do a different project and just sort of cling them together because it's dirty water and I want to purify it and I want to desalinate the water and I want to mm. purify it. To okay. drink. So they're also saying that eventually you would like to uh, use table salts, uh, you know, to, to f as part of your research. What does that mean? Okay. Well, part of the research that I did now included table salts. Mm. And as we know that there's salt in the oceans that we swim in and the oceans that we swim in are pretty dirty. Mm. So using the oceans, I would like to clean the oceans before the drinking water because people put up uh, put different pollutions in the water and they just they mess it up and there's is life living underwater and we need to take care of it okay well there you have it we might just have an answer to our water problem uh, using water from the ocean thanks to Ashuma's research but uh, here's another interesting one of course here yeah, you this is your project that we're actually standing uh, on here Carolyn and uh, yours is a carbon electro electrodes over electrified waters uh, sorry I beg your pardon rather yours is, is, is an early childhood development program um, sort of like just tell us what what does it entail well my research was mainly to see which child would reach the developmental milestones first a child in a privileged community a child in an underprivileged community and a child with a disability Mm. Uh, many people ask me why this project because I have a disability called dyslexia it means I struggle to read and write mm. and that's why I'm in a special school and that's why it's so close to my heart because I know how to struggle with schoolwork mm. and that's why this early education is a nice project for me because where does the good matric results start in the pre-primary class mm. not in the matric class mm. so that's why this is the whole main idea of my project and as you can see at my results the red, that is the privileged child, mm. dominates the charts because they have all the resources. Yes. And then the blue is the underprivileged that don't have all the resources, mm. were second, but they didn't do it as well as the privilege. Mm. And then the disabled children have resources, but they struggled with it, so they came third. So now, so obviously your um, uh, project uh, focuses on uh, issues around equal education, uh, looking at socio-economic issues uh, across our country. You, you said it was because you had a, a personal challenge yourself, uh, but you, when you look around the communities that, uh, that you grew up in, uh, do you think this could be a solution for some of the things that, that we're facing? Yes, because um, my Oma, mm. she helped me to start reading. I couldn't read at all. And she used some of these things to help me. Now that that's why I thought, well, if it helped me, why can't it help other children? Mm. Like there was a few schools um, in the township um, in Port Elizabeth that I visited. They didn't have sanitary use. They didn't have bathrooms. They didn't have any educational toys. Mm. They were actually afraid when I brought a soccer ball for them to play. Mm. So that's why I thought like next year, 
I'm going to provide some of the educational toys for them because I already have a sponsor for next year's project. So really, the way forward with this project is going to benefit so many children. Now, Ashuba, have you uh, participated in the expo uh, before? Is it your first time experience? Like, how has your journey been uh, to, to come this far? No, this is my second year in the mm. Science Expo. It's been amazing. I've been nationals twice already, and I'm just, I am feel really blessed mm. and everything. And you spoke about how, you know, your uh, project, um, some university students struggle with. How do you think you were able to sort of like come up with the solutions that you came up with, but you're still in high school? Well, my friend actually struggled with redox reactions and she's in grade 12. Mm. And being in grade 10, we start with the, the basics. So I had to relearn all of that work. I had to, I had to give up my holiday, basically. Mm. And I think if my teacher says it's okay, then I think that university students will use it as a great example, as a medium. Okay. So me and you were talking earlier on that you say it's such a great solution, it could be used, it'll be useful for teaching students, but you don't really want to be a teacher. No, I don't. <laughs> Maybe later in my life I might be a chemistry lecturer or something. Okay, yeah. Okay, great stuff. Okay, uh, so both of you somehow, you know, you, you're passionate about uplifting, uh, you know, communities and, 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 and bringing answers uh, to, to challenges that communities are faced. Do you want to just show us some of the things that you also developed a game, you said? Yes, not on uh, my own. Mm. Sam, uh, one of my friends helped me. He's a matric, his name is JP Klangons, and he helped me to make this digital. Okay. It's a game um, in three languages, Afrikaans, Isikosa, and in English, because when I was growing up, I know there was no Afrikaans games to stimulate me. So that's why I thought I can help them. Now, basically, the game is a normal game. You type in your name, and then... It continues and mm. it's very interesting for the children because it's pictures, it's lights, it's moving the whole time. And this game is basically to show them difference between shapes. Mm. So this one you would click, they ask you to choose the right shape from the first one, you click on the... Oh, it's touch screen as well. Yes. Okay, sounds so like... that's how the shape works. And then I also made a parent and teacher manual that would assist the children and by helping the teachers to do work. Mm. And my Oma assisted me with this. Yeah, well, there you have it. Saka Isis Ngamfundo. Let's build a nation through education. I can just uh, come in closely as well. I just want to uh, talk about, like, um, she was talking about uh, languages. You know, there's a lot of people are talking about, oh, can we, you know, make science accessible in different languages and all of that. Uh, you're bilingual. Uh, she's also bilingual. So obviously you speak uh, Kosa. Uh, how have you managed to sort of, like, try and understand some of those things, uh, you know, in, in, in different languages, at the same time still be passionate about science? I don't know, it's just, when the teacher teaches it in English, I just, there's a thing that happens in my brain that yeah. just converts it to closer. It's just, for me to understand, and I, I understand it. You, you, it's just, it's, yeah. <laughs> do you think if, if you were taught in, in, in Kosa, do you think you'd even... Nope. No, no, you wouldn't, at all. You wouldn't cry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so for, for those students who, you know, see you on television this morning and say you guys are at this ESCOM Expo for young scientists, um, you know, this thing has been going since 1980. You're part of like a special breed of young people. Uh, how can you encourage them to also just take their science pro project seriously to find themselves uh, here as well? Well, science takes a lot of work and it, it, a lot of dedication. Mm. If they want to end up here, they, they just, they have to show, they have to be in it. They have to be willing to do all the work and they have to be passionate about it. Mm. Well, I think young children, no matter you believe, you can do anything. Like the quote I wrote for my project, I believe every child in South Africa can be successful. We just need the right foundation and the right opportunities. How, how would you say your, your schools and, and teachers have sort of like, in your family, have helped you to, to, to get to, to this level? Well, mostly my uh, teachers have helped me. Mm. They helped me, they taught me the mm. concept and everything. Mm. They, they just helped me a lot by providing me the facilities at school, especially when my school isn't really in the Science Expo because I'm here because of an organization. Mm. And I so just, your school was not necessarily part of it? No, mm. no, no. But I'm just really grateful for them because they, they actually want, they're pushing for Science Expo to be part of our school.